Section 22 of the Algonquin Legends of New England. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mary in Arkansas. The Algonquin Legends of New England, or Myths and Folklore of the Micmac, Passamaquoddy, and Penobscot Tribes, by Charles Godfrey Leland. Section 22. How Lox Came to Grief by Trying to Catch a Salmon. Passamaquoddy Legend. Cusk the Crane had two brothers. One of these was Lox, the Wolverine, or Indian Devil. And his other brother was Coscominus, the Blue Jay. Cusk was very lazy, and one day, being hungry, thought he would go and get a dinner from Lox. Lox served him a kind of pudding soup in a broad flat platter. Poor Cusk could hardly get a mouthful while Lox lapped it all up with ease. Soon after, Cusk made a fine soup, and invited Lox to dinner. This he served up in a jug, a long cylinder. None of it had Lox. Cusk ate it all. The next day the pair went to dine with Blue Jay. Blue Jay said, Wait till I get our food. Then he ran out on a bough of a tree, which spread over a river, and in a minute fished out a large salmon. Truly, thought Lox, that is easy to do and I can do it. So the next day he invited the blue jay and crane to feed with him. Then he too ran down the river and out on a tree, and seeing a fine salmon, caught at it with his claws. But he had not learned the art, and so fell into the river, and was swept away by the rushing current. This is one of Aesop's fables, Indianized and oddly eked out with a fragment from a myth attributed to both Manobozho and the Wabanaki rabbit. As the wolverine has a great resemblance to Loki, it may be observed here that, while he dies in trying to catch a salmon, Loki, in the likeness of a salmon, casts himself into the waterfall of Franager, which was effectively his last act in life before being captured by the gods, as told in the Edda. Otter, in the Edda, caught a salmon, and was then caught by Loki. There is, of course, great confusion here, but the Indian tale is a mere fragment, carelessly pieced and indifferently told. Lox is, like Loki, fire, and perishes by water. How Master Lox, as a raccoon, killed the bear and the black cats, and performed other notable feats of skill, all to his great discredit. Passamaquoddy Legend Now of old time there is a tale of Hespans, the raccoon, according to the Passamaquoddy Indians, but by another record it is Master Lox, to whom all Indian deviltry truly belongs. And this is the story. One fine morning Master Lox started off as a raccoon, for he walked the earth in diverse disguises, to take his usual roundabouts. And as he went he saw a huge bear, as the manuscript reads, right straight ahead of him. Footnote. The same stories are attributed to the wolverine, badger, and raccoon. Now the old bear was very glad to see the raccoon, for he had made up his mind to kill him at once if he could, firstly to punish him for his sins, and secondly to eat him for breakfast. Then the raccoon ran into a hollow tree, the bear following, and beginning to root it up. Now the coon saw that in a few minutes the tree would go, and he would be gone. But he began to sing as if he did not care a bean, and said, all the digging and pushing this tree will never catch me. Push your way in backwards, and then I must yield and die. But that you cannot do, since the hole is too small for you. Then Muin, the Bruin, hearing this, believed it. But he saw that he could easily enlarge the hole, which he did, and so put himself in arrear, upon which the raccoon seized him, and held on till he was slain. Footnote. As Reynard the fox won the victory in the famous tale versified by Goth, Vede Reinica Fox. Then he crawled out of the tree, and having made himself a fine pair of mittens out of the bear's skin, started off again, and soon saw a wigwam from which rose a smoke, and walking in he found a family of Begum Kissicks, or black cats. So greeting them he said, Young folks, comb me down, and make me nice, and I will give you these beautiful bearskin mittens. 
so the little black cats combed him down and parted his hair and brushed his tail and while they were doing this he fell asleep and they being very hungry took the fresh bearskin mitts and scraped them all up and cooked them and ate them then the coon waking up looked very angry at them and said in an awful voice where are my bearskin mitts and they in great fear replied please sir we cooked and ate them then the coon flew at them and strangled them every one all except the youngest who since he could not speak as yet the raccoon or lox thought could not tell on him then for a great joke he took all the little dead creatures and set them up by the roadside in a row as it was a cold day they all froze stiff and then he put a stick across their jaws so that the little black cats looked as if they were laughing for joy then he made off at full speed soon the father the old black cat came home and seeing his children all grinning at him he said how glad the dear little things are to see me but as none moved he saw that something was wrong and his joy soon changed to sorrow footnote this trick is so precisely in the style of lox that it seems a gross mistake to attribute it to the raccoon those who have seen a wild cat grin will appreciate the humor of lox on this occasion then the youngest black cat the baby came out of some hole where he had hid himself now the baby was too young to speak but he was very clever and picking up a piece of charcoal he made a mark from the end of his mouth around his cheek footnote the reader cannot fail to recall the peculiar mustache of the raccoon so well indicated by the infant artist then the father cried ah now i know who it was the raccoon as sure as i live and he started after him in hot pursuit soon the raccoon saw the fierce black cat as an indian coming after him with a club and looking at him he said no club can kill me nothing but a bulrush or cat-tail can take my life then the black cat who knew where to get one galloped off to a swamp and having got a large cat-tail came to the coon and hit him hard with it it burst and spread all over the raccoon's head and being wet the fuzz stuck to him and the black cat thinking it was the coon's brains and all out went his way the raccoon lay quite still till his foe was gone and then went on his travels now he was a great magician though little to other folks good and he came to a place where there were many women nursing their babes and said this is but a slow way you have of raising children to which the good women replied how else should we raise them then he answered i will show you how we do it in our country when we want them to grow fast we dip them into cold water overnight just lend me one and i will show you how to raise them in a hurry they gave him one he took it to the river and cutting a hole in the ice put the child into it the next morning he went to the place and took out a full-grown man alive and well the women were indeed astonished at this all hastened to put their babies that night under the ice and then the raccoon rushed away so they all died then he came to another camp where many women with fine stuff and furs were making bags that is a very slow way you have of working he said to the good wives in our country we cook them under the ashes let me see the stuff and show you how they gave him a piece he put it under the hot coal and ashes and in a few minutes drew out from them a beautiful bag then they all hurried to put their cloth under the fire just then he left in haste and when they drew the stuff out it was scorched or burned and all spoiled then he came to a great river and did not know how to get across he saw on the bank an old weewillmeck a strange worm which is like a horned alligator but he was blind grandfather said the raccoon carry me over the lake yes my grandson said the weewillmeck and away he swam the ravens and crows above began to ridicule them what are those birds saying inquired the old one oh they are crying to you to hurry hurry for your life with that raccoon so the weewillmeck not seeing land ahead hurried with such speed that the raccoon made him run his head and half his body into the bank and then jumped off and left him but whether the weewillmeck ever got out again is more than he ever troubled himself to know so he went on till he came to some black berries and said 
Berries, how would you agree with me if I should eat you? Badly indeed, Master Coon, they replied, for we are choke berries. Choke berries indeed, then I will have none of you. And then further he found on some bushes rice berries. Berries, he cried, how would you agree with me if I should eat you? We should make you itch, for we are itch berries. Ah, that is what I like, he replied, and so ate his fill. Then as he went on he felt very uneasy. He seemed to be tormented with prickles. He scratched and scratched, but it did not help or cure. So he rubbed himself on a ragged rock. He slid up and down till the hair came off. Now the raccoon is bare or has little fur where he scratched himself to this very day. This story is at an end. This story is from the Passamaquoddy Indian English collection made for me by Lewis Mitchell. In the original, the same incident of boiling the hero in a kettle and of his springing out of it occurs as in the tale of Mrs. Bear and the raccoon. This I have here omitted. The Mephistophelian and mocking character of Lox is strongly shown when he says, Nothing but a cat-tail or bulrush can kill me, this being evidently an allusion to Glooskop. This is to an Indian much like blasphemy. Lox, or raccoon, or badger, for they are all the same, in his journeying after mere mischief, reminds us of an Indian till Eulenspiegel. But the atrocious nature of his jokes is like nothing else, unless it be, indeed, the homicide punch. It is the indomitable nature of both which commends them respectively to the Englishman and to the Red Indian. In this tale, Lox appears as a spirit of fire by drawing a bag from it. The itching or pricking from which he suffers is also significant of that element, as it appears, according to Carey, in many Norse, etc., legends. In the Seneca tale of the mischief-maker, the berries are distinctly declared to have souls. End of section 22